Former Congressman Davis joins us now from Washington, D.C. Hello, sir. Andrew, welcome to television and good to talk to you and your audience. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, before we get into the, to the nuts and bolts, I just have to ask you a simple question about the language that we're hearing lately. Um, after the shooting of Gabrielle Giffords, which we all agree was tragic, there was this call for a, a more civil tone. And within days during the health care debate, Representative Steve Cohen of Tennessee referred to Republicans as Goebbels and the big lie. We've heard Republicans referred to as Nazis and Goebbels many times since then. Uh, Josh Mandel, who's a, a Marine and, and Jewish, is running for Senate against Sherrod Brown in Ohio. He's been considered part of the big lie by, by the Brown campaign. We heard Joe Biden say that Romney's going to put you all back in chains. This, don't you think this language should be making people uncomfortable? Well, I think there's an intolerance on the left that people in Washington, D.C., where I'm sitting as we do this interview, a lot of people in Washington, D.C. simply don't understand or refuse to understand the emerging intolerance on the left in American politics. You just provided several examples of it. I could give you more. If you go back and you look at the debate on health care back in March 2010, remember there were Democratic congressmen who went to the floor and who indicated that if you don't want to pass this law, which they themselves didn't want to pass a few weeks earlier, mind you, that if you don't want to pass this law, that it means you're against sick people and you want to throw sick people out on the streets and you don't care about kids. And this is a rhythm now that you hear from the left over and over again, which amounts to, if you don't agree with me, there's something that's wrong with you. And the irony of it, the thing that would be funny if it weren't so serious, is what do they accuse the political right of doing? You could go to any lobbyist paid for table at Bobby Vans or the Palm or any other place in D.C. today, and you could have found a group of Democratic lobbyists or operatives who were clucking about how, the intel how intolerant the Republican Party is. Well, the reality is that the left has adopted its own intolerance, and we could spend the rest of this program talking about it. Well, and, you know, it's funny that whenever Democrats say something offensive, it's usually Joe Biden. Um, it's always put into context or it's written off as a lame attempt at humor. But this is a campaign that I want you to take a look. This is from the Brown, uh, Sherrod Brown campaign in Ohio. He's become the candidate of the big lie. Fact checkers call his attacks pants on fire. He may be the most dishonest candidate in the country. When you say chains, speaking to a largely black audience, we know exactly what metaphor you're getting at. There's really few others. When you're talking about somebody who's Jewish and you're saying they're part of the big lie, there are very few metaphors you're talking about. Well, let me tell you part of what's going on here, Andrew. A lot of my grandmother always told me that if you can't figure out how to make a point intelligently, you'll often end up calling someone a name. And what I think is going on right now in politics, unfortunately, is the Democratic Party is struggling to make coherent arguments. They can't obviously defend 44 months of unemployment above 8 percent in a row. They can't defend three years in a row of a failed recovery. So they're having to resort to these cliches. They're having to resort to what amount to calling people names because they know very well that their policies aren't popular, their policies aren't selling. That's why, obviously, the president's gotten a bump from the convention in the last few days, but the race will settle back to even very soon. And and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, please. No, I was just going to say, before we get into your personal transformation and probably some of the things um, that have been said about you and maybe your, 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 your second analysis of the way the economy works, I, you know, you're talking about uh, today's Democratic Party. I went and watched on C-SPAN uh, Bill Clinton's 1992 uh, DNC uh, acceptance speech, and it was so unbelievably different than the speeches we heard 20 years later, including mm -hmm. former President Clinton's. I mean, he gave overtures to, to moderate uh, 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 Democrats and conservative Democrats. He talked about a government that was leaner but not meaner, that the rich should pay uh, their fair share but they shouldn't be soaked, that parents should have more control over, over their child's education. You know, Romney and Ryan and Republicans get vilified when even mentioning school choice. You no longer hear the kinds of arguments you made in the Democratic Party, and that's why I'm not there anymore. It used to be that the Democratic Party certainly believed in government playing an expansive role in our society, 
but they used to understand that government cannot be the dominant civil institution in our society. It just can't be or will create all kinds of disincentives to free market behavior. We don't want a world where government is the dominant thing in our society. Well, somewhere in the last several years, the Democratic Party has decided that it believes as a philosophical matter that government ought to be the single most important institution in American life. And over and over again last week in Charlotte, you heard Democratic speaker after Democratic speaker talk about what government ought to be doing, what government can do for us. Remember when someone named John Kennedy actually talked about what our obligations were? Remember when Bill Clinton talked about what our obligations were in the 90s? Well, we're back to a world now where the Democratic Party essentially believes in government being the one-stop shop for all of our ills and problems. Yeah, I'm